Hello everybody, it is Juice here and we're going to be making a 3.7 Genshin Impact tier list. So we're going to be starting this little series every patch. I will be making a tier list of just generally all the characters, seeing if my opinions will change. So starting with Geo Traveler, uh, he's like generally you wouldn't use him. Like he's not bad. The like recent increase in difficulty of the Abyss. This guy is just like, nah, not as useful. Albedo, okay, I have him. I don't Double crowned him. I like him a lot. I'd say he is not that useful in the current stage of the meta. If you have Ito, then he's bumped up a little bit, but otherwise, he's not much on his own. Amber, I'm actually gonna put her. I'm gonna leave her at bad breath because I wouldn't put her here just because she has that like one niche usage for Hu Tao teams. Otherwise, yeah, she'd just be down here. She's pretty much been the same as always. Dendro had no concessions towards her, unlike all the other starter characters, literally. Uh, so not much else to say about her. Ayaka, I have a history with. Listen, if you hyper invest in your Ayaka and you you can run like a proper good mono cryo freeze team whatever like i'd even argue this but if you have a free to play ayaka some might disagree with me just here okay i'm gonna be honest because i've experienced both ayakas when i first pulled for her wanting ayaka thinking she's gonna be great i only had kokomi venti and rosaria to pair with her and she wasn't that good like she really wasn't just clearing with enough damage compared to my other units whereas whenever i got her mid splitter c2 r1 shenha kazuha and then i think like ganyu with her 20 cryo damage bonus in her burst like that that's when she began to pop off and literally be one of the best units on my account. Also, Cryos just fell off in relevancy a bit and the fridge isn't really like the top of the meta or anything. So I'd say I'm going to put her at Colgate Flavor as a concession because she is still really strong. And this is the point I want to make in this video. Dendro did not make everything else bad. I know it's a crazy concept, but seriously, it didn't. Uh, Barbara, uh, I, I've never liked Barbara much. However, I don't think she's bad by any means. Like if you've ever seen videos of people playing like DPS Barbara, those are pretty funny. Like, she can do numbers. She can actually vape pretty nicely. And for free to plays, she's actually increased in value. I'm gonna put her at the top of this because, like, Dendro's increased her value a bit. Beto used to be, like, around this, like, area, but because she kind of fell off with Dendro. So I'm gonna say she's here because she's so strong. Right. That's just kind of obvious, isn't it? And I know some people don't think he's fallen off a tiny bit, but, like, really, it's Bennett. Like, everyone's first instinct when they get a new character is, I wonder how much she can do with Bennett. Like, seriously, that's the first thing that everyone thinks. So Chongyun here, um, let me. Let me think. He's pretty decent, like melt unit. And for once again, for free to play, he's not bad, but he's quite easily replaceable. Like, I'm gonna put him here. He's not that good. He can work, but he's not the best. Diluc, I think people trash on him like way too much. I'd say he's honestly mid. Like, he's not so bad. He deserves to be here because he actually does do more than a lot of units do. Like, Hu Tao at C0. Third one, yeah, sure. It kills him by a lot, but generally they can perform similar. That's just something that you should take note of. I don't know. I think people do kind of crap on him a bit too much. Uh, speaking of like his aging. Sure, he didn't age that well, but at least he's not like beyond repair. Diona is pretty good. She's a four star, but she has a lot of utilities. Like, I don't know if I can put her above Albedo in good faith because Albedo is still like a good unit of what he does, but what Diona does is literally just more viable in the current meta. Fischl's just become one of like S tier characters of like Genshin recently with the rise of Dendro with her A4 passes. Like she's really upgraded aggravate teams. I don't know why I'd say she's better than Bennett though. I'm still gonna say Bennett's better, but Fischl is definitely like like, proper good two space quality. Okay, I am a triple crown Ganyu main. I have her C1, R1. I play her every day. I love my Ganyu. So, uh, I, I'm sorry. Once again, yes, I'm trying to be as objective as possible. I am trying to base this on the meta. However, if you ask me, like, just based on my time playing these two, Ganyu has just proven to be such an asset. Like, when I got Ganyu, that was already a great upgrade to Ayaka. I don't think people are realizing how, like, Ganyu's flexibility is really nice. And before people say that, oh, who cares about flexibility? when there's damage. Have you seen the recent abyss with the lectors? Have you seen how good Melt Ganyu is there? I know a lot of people are just gonna leave after saying like, I say this, but okay, I'm standing by this. I genuinely think Ganyu's better than Ayaka here. However, in terms of raw damage, yes, a hyper-invested Ayaka will outperform a hyper-invested Ganyu. I understand. You can even consider these two equal. You can. And I have played them both a really good amount. I have both really well invested and I would still recommend Ganyu just based on so many factors like comfortability, all the teams she can use, all the weapons she can use. Being good as a free-to-play unit is another thing. Ayaka's not that good as a free-to-play unit anymore because how much damage you need. Another thing is I main Hu Tao. I've mained her ever since 2.2 when I got her. She's been my maid alongside Ganyu. Play them in every abyss. Well, I think she is really great. Uh, I'm gonna say that she's better than these two just because of the amount of bossing that there is in abyss. I'm not sure if I would put her up here just like the universal sports. They're always the best ones. Now, note if you have C0 and no five-star weapon, for some people, she's just significantly worse. However, I'm gonna say I played C0 R5 
drive Dragon's Bane Hutao for a year on a laggy iPad before I moved to PC. And I cleared every Abyss 36 stars, even the hard ones. So I'm sorry to say this, but skill issue. Uh, Jean is like better than these two, I'd say. She's Animo. That's already pretty good in her favor. She's just not that useful anymore in the current meta. However, I do think her cleanse is something to be appreciated. Haya, uh, he can actually be surprisingly good. Like if you have constellations, he's surprisingly good, especially in freeze teams. Like you can run like a free to play freeze without Ayaka and Kaya perfectly fine. Okay, depends if you have columns or not, but I'll leave him here. So Kaching, I'm going to say she's definitely gotten better. So she's here. It's like, if you want to play her, you can play her and she'll do really well for you, especially if you invest highly in her. If you play her in her old teams, well then you know what happens. If you play her in Dendro teams, then she's definitely here. Come on. Listen, I was saying how with Ganyu, like there's factors outside of raw damage that matter. Same with Klee. Listen, her damage is not so dog piss. I would say that's the sole sentiment for her being here. That's for a different character later on. Let's say you here with, with Klee. If you can't execute that damage, when you put effort into C0 Hu Tao, you get rewarded. Your reward is a really strong unit. Like you get a really strong damage output afterwards. You don't get that with Klee. You, like you can just play Diluc and it's 10 times easier and he's a standard banner character but you'll get at some point anyway. Lisa is great thanks to Dendro. She's improved. Dendro really was a concession to her. Her EM scaling too. I think she just really did kind of flourish a little more in, in the Dendro landscape. So yeah, I would say such a thing. I'm assuming that this wasn't Geo then. I'm going to use this traveler to represent Dendro then because let's be real, who plays Electro Animo? For anyone who's wondering, Electro Traveler would be like here or like here and then like Animo Traveler, I would stick probably at the bottom of here. For Dendro Traveler, I'm going to say really nice. I used Dendro Traveler. I don't like Nihita. So I used uh, Dendro Traveler instead and they're really good. They cover their role the best here. And I think it's because the sole role is to apply Dendro, but they do that really well and they actually can pull off some nice spreads sometimes and the fact that they're free is just a really big deal and from an objective meta standpoint they're actually like usable with all the dendro units okay mona's kind of fell off i think for nukes she's still like good if you want to do like the umeru and then like throw a nuke out and do like 1 billion damage per screenshot but in the actual abyss even then i just recommend kokomi over ayaka because of comfortability i wonder who's more comfortable so yeah that's my consensus uh ning Wang, i'm gonna say she's not that good she's definitely better than these guys that's a bit rough i'm gonna say she's like here she actually does do good damage i think like she's a good dps it's just because when there's so much better units you can build everyone from here onwards is more wall building than ningguang you know what i mean noelle is actually kind of underrated by a lot of people because she consolidates a lot of roles kind of like ganyu uh i'm gonna say that she's probably like here like she's a decent dps once again it's just that all these other units are a bit more worth investing in than a noelle however don't underestimate her she's pretty good even if she's a starting unit listen she really didn't get better of dendro like she really did not i'm still gonna say Klee is worse she's the worst character in the game in my opinion that's such an obvious answer you already know what it is by this point so yeah that's my opinion on chi chi ah my first main razor okay i think with razor as much as i do like him he's not good <laughs> he's a physical dps man physical dps's aren't good anymore and you can't actually wait you can play him thundering furry if you play him like that then he's like here but for his conventional play style he's only here well that's easy enough sucrose is amazing if we're considering comfortability because if we're not considering comfortability then ayaka beats if we're considering comfortability then i can't put them here i'm trying to consider just their meta standpoints in general and i feel like sucrose just has a really strong place in the meta right now i'm skeptical on putting her up there just because like she's good but she's really clunky can't even utilize her burst properly but she's so good okay i'm gonna take a leap of faith and say she's up here and then so many people are gonna get mad over this but he's so good i feel like no one gives him enough credit for being so good i have him polar star and really well invested i've done a lot for my child and she's amazing international is still the best team in the game even with all the fancy dendro bits and bobs and i think that's just something really special like child is a great unit don't underestimate that like he's a really good unit okay i'm not sure if i'd say he's better than official like there's flexibility to consider here i think the thing with child is that he's good in like two teams he's good in ganyu child freeze give it a try if you haven't great in aoe and he's good in international he's be the best team in the game by the way and yes it's better than raid and national i'll get on to that yeah hot takes i know so yeah child to me best hydro unit for international in the game so better than ching for international for international specifically and better than Raiden 4 international specifically. So he's very high ranking in my opinion. Best character ever. Not even in Genshin, just in general. He's my favorite. Okay. However, where does he fare in standard terms in the meta? I'm gonna say like he's an Archon, so he's got lots of longevity. He goes like about here. He's not that overpowered for an Archon, but he's very cute and he is also like pretty good. I have him, right? LG for the end, double crown, current abyss, breeze, first chamber. You can imagine how fun he is in that instance. Well, then this is an easy one. Like seriously, it's Shang Ling. What else do I have to say? We're playing Shang Ling Impact. Come on. 
And then we have Xiao, evil conquering. Okay, uh, this character I also like quite a bit. So in terms of playstyle, I have him on C1. I have him like 10, 9, 10. He's got Homa. I think he's a pretty great character. I'm gonna be honest. He's actually with Farazan's addition. He's up here. He's actually a really good DPS. I'd even argue possibly a better Venisu if Breeze isn't good in the Abyss or Melt isn't good in the Abyss and maybe like this. But yeah, Xiao's pretty good. Okay, Xingqiu is hands down one of the best units in the game right now. Listen, he is so highly demanded. The water boy is making me want to drink water. Give me a sec. Mmm. Love water. Thanks for the hydration. So listen, this kid is insane. So many teams he's contested in. So much damage from him. Amazing constellations. Great character synergy. I think he's like, listen, before Dendro, Bennett was probably better than him. But in the current state of like, Genshin Impact, Xingqiu is the best character in the game. Like, hands down. He just outclasses all of them. If it's international situation, yes, Child is better. But every other scenario, Xingqiu beats. Okay, Xinyan, I'm gonna say here. She's just not good. She's a physical DPS. Actually, she has some use in Monopyro. She can out DPS a certain someone. Okay, Zhongli, a uh, very handsome fellow, another character I really like. I'm gonna say, just like the same as Venti, consider this equal. It's like, he's really good, but look at the top meta units here. Do any of them need Zhongli? And look at here. Like, okay, to be fair, three out of four could use him. However, only two out of four, like, kinda need him, and only one out of four really appreciates him. Yes, you can play Hu Tao with other big units. Have you heard of Funerational? It's great, trust me. Rosario is, like, really great. I'd actually say, like, nah. Yeah, I think that's fair. No, I'll do this instead. I think she's a pretty good unit. Great cryo battery, great sub DPS. I see no reason why she would be bad. Eula is a physical DPS, but she is better than the standard physical DPS, like these two. So she is like the kind of the standard. She sets the bar for physical DPSs. So she's okay. I'd say I personally really like her. I think she's awesome. Yeah, I've considered pulling for her myself, but the playstyle is just not like comfortable. And when it comes to damage, her damage output is severely kind of gimped, if that makes sense. Like the way her burst is, and there's so many playstyle issues with her. Like it's just kind of have a lot of issues and get a lot more damage out with all these units up here much quicker. Now, Yanfei can become Tankfei, which automatically gives her good utility. And utility is very important. She's also a good DPS. She's just kind of not the, like as good as all these other characters. So she's just down here. Okay, uh, I'm hold on. I gotta choose my side. Do I have Kazuha fans murder me or do I have Sucrose fans murder me? Nah, I'm just kidding. Just consider this equal. Uh, they're basically, if C2 then above, but if C0 equal. They're both really great units, great international, just great in general. Kazuha is amazing. Like, he is so good. It's insulting how good he is. Now, Yoimiya is actually surprisingly similar to Hutao. You'd be surprised. I'm saying that as a Hutao main. I can actually admit I've been proven wrong. I myself used to think she wasn't that good, but I was proven wrong. So I will say she's actually decent. I'm just going to put her up here because her damage output, like I said, it's actually not that bad. Yes, her being single target only is a bit of an issue because Hutao can still kind of charge through enemies. And there's lots of reasons why Yoimiya isn't higher up here because I wouldn't say she beats two Archons and then Kaching is just a really good aggravate unit. At the minute. So what's my take on Yoimiya? Sai is just a really mid animo, literally the same as Jean, if not possibly better than Jean. Can play around with her a little more. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay, Raiden Shogun. Like she's gain value. You know, she can play her in Hyper Bloom now. And I say lost because like at this point everyone's just gonna be. Oh no, she hasn't lost value. I was gonna say that perhaps the fact that her crit builds are just not as good anymore because you can just play Hyper Bloom. That's not really a good point. But I do feel like compared to uh, other units, she can be replaced. But it depends on the scenario. You know what I mean? It's like in most dangerous scenarios, you can just replace her with Kuki. Like, you get different things. If Raiden, you get more damage and have way better uptimes. If Kuki, you get, like, really good healing. But I think when trying to decide who Raiden is, like, better, I think just because of Hyper Bloom, I'll put her at, like, the bottom of here. I don't think she's necessarily busted, as her, like, biggest fans say, but I don't think she's necessarily as, like, bad. So I think I was underrating her a bit there. She is actually really good. Kujo Sara, I'd say pretty good support. I actually have her built up pretty nicely. I'm gonna put her here. She's good for Raiden. I wouldn't say she's that good for any of her Electro, unfortunately. Kokomi, uh, I'm gonna say, like, top here, though. Okay, listen. Dendro's just made her up here. Like, she genuinely is just that good now. I'm not sure if I'll put her above, like, the Legends, but she technically is a Legend. She's Colgate flavor. This gets the Legend. I kind of forgot that Aloe existed when, <laughs> when going through these. But, yeah, she's not- She can be an okay cryo battery, so that's actually something that she can do, but she only really triggers it once, but her damage is not as, like, dog piss as some people might think. Um, okay, Toma's, like, decent, but it's really, like, are you really gonna use Toma? I'm gonna say, like, here. He's not bad, but- Oh, wait a minute. I completely forgot Burgeon was a thing. Burgeon's good. Burgeon's really good, actually. What, what am I talking about? Okay, in such a case, I'm gonna put him here then, just because of Burgeon. Ito's a great DPS, but you have to consider the current abyss. 
look at the shield breaking. It's awful. Like, shield breaking literally destroys this man. But his DPS is undeniably very good. So I might even have to put him here. And he does do decent AoE. Goru is only good for like two teams or something. So I'm going to say he's like here to sort of value respect. My Shen has C2 R1. However, when I was testing her around at C1 R1 or like to C1 in general, her value depends on the relevancy of Cryo. You know what I mean? Okay, I'll say she's here. That's mostly just because I believe that she's got a lot of value for any future Cryo unit is going to benefit from Shenha. Like, that's just the truth. But Cryo has fallen off a little bit. However, I think the character is excellent. Like, definitely if you're like me and you're a Cryo enthusiast and you love everything about the elements, it's one of my favorite elements. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Yinjin. Yeah, really good support. Even though she only supports one character, that one character does really well. Ayato, there is some synergy there too. So, yeah, Yinjin is going to age really well in the future as well. Miko. I actually think Miko is a very good unit. I'm going to say here, just her damage with Dendro is really nice. Actually, I'd arguably even say she's like close to Kaching now. Yes, she has some clunk issues. I wouldn't say skill issue because she did actually have a lot of problems at release, but they fixed it over time. Um, Dendro really did help. Ayato is just kind of like a mid DPS in my opinion. I think that everyone just kind of forgot about him a while after his release. I rarely see any hardcore Ayato man. Call yourself out in the comments. Let your voices be heard. I'm gonna say like probably here. Very nice and virgin actually. Pretty good hydro player. And I'd say the thing that Ayato has over child is that Ayato can perform in multiple teams. So his child is just really, really insanely good in like one team. And unfortunately, he is uglier than child. Then we have Yolan. Now, armpit lady. Okay, I think that's a fair placement. She's really good. Like, this right here is a team, by the way. The top four are already a team. That's just how good they are. Like, these two have insane synergy. Have you played Double Hydro Group Tau? You should. Like, literally after this video, go play it if you can. Yolan really did do a lot for a ton of units. You can play Double Hydro of units that previously weren't that contested. You can play Double Hydro of units that are already contested and make them even better. You could play Yolan for her ramping buff or because her Hydro application is perfect for certain units. Like, it's insane how good she is in so many scenarios. Shinobu has honestly gotten pretty great with the rise of Dendro. I'm gonna put her up with the other Electro ladies here. Just a little bit behind these two because I do think that like sometimes you do just need the raw damage. He likes that. But she is a very good unit for healing and survivability and just everything to do with that kind of thing. Hazo's just, listen, I know that Hazo fans are like rabbit. I love you all. Seriously, you're all hilarious. But I'm going to have to slander the boy a bit because unfortunately, as a DPS, he's animo, right? So there's not really any way to properly shred his reses and he's just kind of weak. He had a lot of initial hype. I think it's just because his character was just great, man. I love it. But generally, he's just kind of forgotten about it's a playable unit now, at least in my opinion. Pignari, I think, is a very good unit. I think he's aged pretty well. I've realized that he's actually just a little bit below Ching. And I'm happy with this little change here. But this, I'd say, yes, he's really good. And he actually can benefit from Zhongli. That's a plus. Kale is actually not as people made her out to be. I think she's actually pretty good just on the basis that she's Dendro. Yeah, her AoE is not that wide, but she's like a nice to like quick swap into and just do some Dendro damage, swap off. I'm gonna say she's better than all the units that just aren't really synergistic with Dendro. She's really the embodiment of mid. I've low invested in her. She's all right. Dory's okay. Listen, I understand why people don't like her, but in terms of play style, kind of like being an electro applicator done before. So yeah, that's just what I think of a Dory. She's just mid. She's like it's just because she's kind of useless because other units can do what she does and way more. Nilu is not only really cool because she has horns. I wish they were real horns. I would have pulled for her then. Also because she enables really insane blooms, and I think that's really cool. So I'm gonna put her here. She is a really nice unit. However, I'm just gonna have to put her here because unfortunately bloom does still just have like a weaker ceiling. Like Hu Tao has a really high ceiling. Raiden has a really high ceiling if you're playing hyper carry C2 or C0 hyper carry. So I used to play C0 hyper carry a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah, bloom teams are amazing. Their AoE is great, but in single target, they just kind of fall off. Another thing I'd like to point out is they're fine in both AoE and single target. So that's something to point out. Now, Sino, he's okay. I have Sino in his signature weapon. I think he's fine. Like he's not too great, but once again, just a bit mid, especially if you don't have a good team to pair with him. But he's like worse Raiden. Like you can just play Raiden and have a much better time in my opinion. Candice doesn't really have a place in the game. However, she can play in like a niche Hyper Bloom team with Shang Cho and they're actually a pretty good tag duo in that one Hyper Bloom team. Also, Candice can play in Nilu teams as well as a secondary Hydro. She's not that bad. Give her a shot if you can. I might even move her above like, or to here. She's actually not so bad. Nahida is like, I'm gonna say here. No, no, she's better than that. Kind of difficult because like, for me, it's like pulling order, right? Like Bull Shang Cho, Bennett, Shangling, Gilan. I'd say these guys, they're really good, but they're not as priority as these guys. Now, I skip Nahida personally, but she is a very comfortable unit. I've played her so many times on every account, and I can say for a fact, she is what makes Dendro teams. Without her, my Dendro characters just don't feel good. You seriously should consider investing in Nahida if you don't have her. Now, if you're like me and you're just a diehard Dendro avoider because you're loyal to your Vaporize and Melt teams, then that's fair. She can also be really good at Melt. I swear, that's the reason I almost edged in for Nahida, just so I can make my Ganya better. Layla's a nice Cryo Shielder. I really don't have much to say. She's like a little better than Diona, and that's it. Arguably even worse if you think the healing utility is better. So that's all I have to say about her.
You can never go wrong with a name like Honda, all right? So, Honda Boy. Not sure where I'm gonna put the Honda Boy. For those of you who don't know, just search up Scaramouche R ad or Honda ad and then Taco Bell ad. You'll be blessed. Okay, he's actually okay. I'm gonna say he's like, oh, he's better than Kaya, come on. He's better than all these guys. I'd say he's here. He's kind of like a significantly worse Xiao. Like, I feel like Xiao just kind of does what he does, but way better. And his play style's a bit clunky. Kind of cool, but he can fly around though. Farizan's one of the most nice supports they've added in recent times. I seriously think her addition really helped a lot of Animo GPS units. I really appreciate her. The only problem was obviously her clunk at C0, but like I'm trying to assume that for most of these characters in their tier, regardless of C0 or C6 positions, then with good old Yao Yao here, she is very good. I have her nicely built up to a degree. I think she's good. I think she's actually really good. I'm actually going to put her above Dentro Traveler and because she's really, really synergistic with a really good amount of units. I think that she's a four star and if you don't have her, get her. No reason to avoid her. A high thumb's like arguably one of the best Dentro DPS in the game. Definitely consider if you don't have him. He, his banner should be on right now by the time you're watching this video. Um, He's a really great unit. Aside from him being hot, he's just really like flexible. He's good in so many teams. He can compete with five star weapons on three star weapons. He's just really relevant right now. He's like one of the few characters able to best just terrible abyss, which makes sense because the abyss is supposed to sell current units, but it's one of the worst abysses we've had. Yo, what in the world happened? So yeah, a high thumb, pretty great stuff. Were you expecting something else? I'm sorry, but <laughs> this is the reality of the situation. That's kind of all I have to say. Mika's like a physical DPS. Another one's a physical support. What am I saying? DPS? I do not sleep enough, dude. <laughs> Where am I gonna put him? Because he's like a support, so I'm gonna say here. He's really niche. He's not even that good for Yula until C6, so yeah, he's mid. Kave! Um, fun fact, Kave means coffee Kave. in Hungarian. Pardon my bad pronunciation, I was not born there. I'm gonna say like a little better than Yao Yao, just because he can shield his- He doesn't even need the healing. Pretty good if you play Bloom. Worse than Yao Yao if you don't play Bloom, though. But he's a pretty good four-star dental unit. I'd actually recommend him. He's good. Baiju's just kind of mid. Like, I think everyone knew he was going to be mid. I'd even say Yao Yao can be better in some cases, but yeah, just like solid. And Kira like once again all the four star dendros kind of bound in the same position they're all just kind of good like they're all decent and they have their own quirks to them and then i still don't know what this picture is supposed to be instead of ranking it based on meta i'm just gonna rank it on coolness points i like the purple it gets a, a decent paste out of 10 for coolness points anyways this has been can i put it back please 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 never okay just for that you get to be the worst picture ever um all right <laughs> Well, this has been Juice, and hopefully this tier list is somewhat agreeable. My opinion here is just that this is a current state of Genshin. Like, this tier list could be totally different once the first Fontaine unit releases. So I say stay tuned for Fontaine. Future of Genshin is bright. And without further ado, this has been Juice signing out. Remember to brush your teeth tonight. Okay, goodbye.